All right, so previously we've seen how the UI text field delegate is implemented. We've also talked through how protocols work and the delegation pattern. But because this is quite a complex topic and it's quite abstract to wrap your head around, it's probably a good idea to watch these videos a couple of times before it'll actually start to sink in. In this lesson, I want to show you the full picture. So we're going to create our own protocol, our own delegates, and we're going to be able to see the entire process without any of Apple's code. And I want to make it easier to understand through the use of an analogy. In this analogy, we have a emergency call center staff and his responsibility is to respond to emergency calls and dispatch emergency staff as and when needed. So this is our class of emergency call handler. And the emergency call handler has access to a bleep. So I've never seen a bleep either until I started working in a hospital. And it's this very old and strangely very expensive piece of technology, which is kind of like an old school mobile phone where you can call the bleep. It has a phone number and you can trigger it to report a message on the screen as well as bleep. So make a sound. And sometimes you can even get it to play recorded messages. And in this case, our emergency call handler can activate this bleep remotely and get it to trigger and play a sound and notify the person that carries the bleep that there is a cardiac arrest, somebody's heart has stopped and you need to go and perform CPR. So in this case, the bleep is going to be the delegate property. And whoever carries the bleep or whoever is the delegate is the one that's going to be notified when they need to perform some action. Now, the emergency call handler doesn't actually care who carries this bleep or who is the delegate. All it cares is that in order to be able to carry the cardiac arrest bleep, you must have first completed the advanced life support course. So this is a two day course where you learn how to resuscitate somebody or bring them back to life um, through the use of various methods. And one of the methods you learn is CPR. The emergency call handler knows that whoever is the delegate, whoever carries the bleep must have completed this course. And so they must adopt this protocol. So this is the advanced life support protocol. And whoever has adopted this advanced life support protocol will, of course, surely know how to perform the CPR method. So now that everything is set up, a day goes by and a new day begins. So on this beautiful morning, Pete, the paramedic, comes in and he is the one who is on shift today to carry the bleep. So he's carrying around this bleep, which can go off at any minute, notifying him where he needs to be to perform CPR. And so the emergency call handler at some unknown time will get a call and he will trigger the bleep to go off. Often when you're working as a doctor, the bleep is the bane of your life. I love the classic thing that the doctor does, always checking the time and saying, oh God, what time am I woken up? Now that the emergency call handler has triggered the bleep, it basically tells whoever is the delegate or whoever is carrying the bleep that you must go here and perform CPR. Now, because today it's the paramedic, Pete, who's on call, then he's the one who gets the message and he goes and does that action. And we know that he can do that action because he has the advanced life support certificate or protocol. So the emergency call handler can be safe in the knowledge that when they trigger this pager or this bleep, that whoever is carrying it is able to perform CPR and they're able to notify the delegate or the person on call to perform that action by calling delegate.performCPR. 
Now, the beauty of this is, of course, that it might be the paramedic Pete who's on call, it might be the doctor Dave who's on call, or it could be the surgeon Sally who is carrying the pager or the bleep. But to the emergency call handler, they don't need to care. All that they care about is that as long as there is somebody carrying the pager or the bleep, they can trigger the method, perform CPR, and whoever it is, whichever class it is that is set as the delegate, will be notified and will perform that functionality. So let's convert all of this logic into code. Inside Xcode, I'm going to create another new project. And it's again going to be a macOS command line tool. And I'm going to call it protocols and delegates. So we're going to head over to our main.swift and delete everything as usual. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create that protocol. So I'm going to create that certificate effectively. I use the protocol keyword and I give my protocol a name, which in this case is going to be called the advanced live support. Now, this advanced live support protocol has just one requirement. In order to adopt this protocol, in order to get this advanced live support certificate, you must be able to know how to perform CPR. And there's no implementation in the protocol. It's up to the person who is adopting this protocol to say how they're going to perform CPR, but they must know how to do this. So they must define this function somewhere within their class or their struct. Now comes along our emergency call handler. And this class is going to have a important property, which is the delegate property. And the delegate property has a data type. It has a advanced life support protocol as the data type. So this means that Whoever sets themselves as the delegate, any class or struct must have the advanced life support protocol adopted. So they must be able to know how to perform CPR. So the emergency call handler has a couple of functionalities or methods. Um, for example, they might be able to take calls. They might be able to assess the situation. Um, where are you at and what's happened? To keep this simple, let's just say that assess situation involves asking the caller, can you tell me what happened? But they also have the functionality of triggering a medical emergency. So in this case, what they're going to do is they're going to call upon the delegate, whoever it may be, and they have no knowledge or care of who the delegate is. But all they need to do is say, whoever is on call, whoever is carrying the pager, please perform CPR on this patient. And so now let's define who the delegate may be. Let's define our paramedic. Paramedic. And this paramedic is going to adopt the advanced life support protocol. So they've been on the course, they've got the certificate. And what this means is they must be able to know how to perform CPR. And you can see that this is the error that we're getting from Xcode at the moment. Type paramedic does not conform to protocol advanced life support because in order to conform, you must have some implementation of this method called perform CPR. So if we go ahead and click fix, it'll add that function into our paramedic struct. And we now have to define what happens when this method gets triggered. In our case, the paramedic is simply going to do some chest compressions 30 per second. And they know how to do this because they went on the course. And so they've got the certificate and they know how to implement perform CPR. And in addition, when the paramedic goes on shift, when they are initialized, they get told who the handler is. So the handler is, of course, of class emergency call handler. So when the paramedic goes on shift, the first thing they do is they pick up the bleep or the pager and they set the handler's delegate property as themselves. So this is the equivalent of picking up that pager, which is the 
emergency pager and they're now on call. And through this line of code, they've said, I am going to listen for notifications when I have to perform CPR from the emergency call handler. I know who the handler is and when they tell me to perform CPR, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now that we've defined all of our classes, structs, protocols, whatever it may be, it's time to create our objects from these blueprints. The first thing we've got is an emergency call handler. So we'll call him Emilio, Emilio, the emergency call handler. And then we've also got Pete, the paramedic who's on call. And when the paramedic gets started with his day, he knows who the handler is. He gets notified that today you're on call and Emilio is going to be the one who's going to give you notifications, tell you when you need to go and perform CPR. Now we've got Emilio and Pete both working and on their shifts. So at some point, Emilio gets a call and he's going to first assess the situation, what's happening, what's going on, where are they based, and then he deems that this is an emergency. So he's going to trigger a medical emergency. And when that happens, so let's run our code. The first thing that gets printed is Emilio is assessing the situation. So he's asking the caller, can you tell me what happened? The next thing that happens is the medical emergency. And this triggers the delegate, whoever is set as the delegate to perform CPR. And in this case, it is, of course, our paramedic who's on call because he's set himself as the delegate. So when Emilio triggers the medical emergency, the bleep goes off and it's the paramedic who's on call. So he goes and does the CPR. Now, this is all possible because of the fact that we can use the protocol as a data type. So in this case, the emergency call handler has this delegate property, which requires that whoever sets themselves as the delegate must have this data type. They must have the advanced life support protocol adopted. And the reason why they must have the protocol adopted is because the emergency call handler knows that if you've adopted the advanced life support, then you must have this functionality of performing CPR. So when they need to call upon the delegate to perform CPR, they don't actually care who is the delegate, what class it is, what super class it might have. All they care is that they must be of the type advanced life support. So this means that we could create some other classes. Let's say I've got a class instead of struct here, and this is a doctor class. And the doctor class doesn't actually have a super class. It's just a class as it is. But the doctor class has adopted the advanced life support protocol. So they've also been on the course. And that means that they know how to perform CPR. So let's add that function perform CPR in here. Now, when they perform CPR, all that's going to happen is they're going to follow the advanced life support protocol and they're just going to do some chest compressions 30 per second. Now, the doctor also has some other functionality and maybe they could, uh, maybe they also like using their stethoscopes. And when they do that, all that we do is we'll say they uh, print listening for heart sounds. And the doctor, similar to the paramedic, the first thing that they do when they get initialized or when they start their shift is they set themselves up with the emergency call handler. So they know that there is a emergency call handler and they set themselves as the delegate. They put on the pager and they are saying that when I go on shift, I'm going to be the one that is going to be the delegate that's going to be notified when I need to perform CPR. And if the emergency call handler triggers this method, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, in addition, there could be a surgeon class and the surgeon class inherits from the doctor class. So that means they immediately by default, adopt the advanced life support because it's inherited from the doctor class. And it also means that they already have access to the method 
perform CPR, but they can of course override it. So they could say, well, do what the doctor would do when they need to perform CPR. But in addition, because we are surgeons, we also like to do a little bit of singing while we perform CPR. So we're going to uh, sing Staying Alive by the Bee Gees while we perform our chest compressions. Now, in addition, maybe the surgeon also has some extra functionality, say they are really good with electric drills, which just make whirring sounds when you play with it. I mean, use it. So there we go. We've now defined a doctor class as well as a surgeon class. And we're now able to put some other guys on shift. So let's say that today it's not Pete who's on shift. Let's say it's Angela, the surgeon who's on shift. And the first thing I do, of course, is go ahead and set myself up with Emilio. And that means that I'm going to be the one carrying the pager and listening for when Emilio will trigger the perform CPR method. And so now when Emilio triggers a medical emergency, if we run the code, notice how we haven't changed any of the code that Emilio has performed. But as soon as the medical emergency goes off, it's actually the surgeon that does the chest compressions while singing Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. So it's, of course, this method that's getting called. So now we've seen how our paramedic struct can adopt the advanced life support protocol. Our class doctor can adopt the advanced life support protocol. Our class surgeon, which inherits from doctor, is automatically adopting the advanced life support protocol. And in this case, the emergency call handler, which is taking the role of our UI text field, can be completely blissfully unaware of who is going to be performing the CPR, which class or whatever they may be. As long as they adopt the advanced life support, we can trigger the perform CPR method. And it could be the paramedic that's on call. It could be the doctor or it could be the surgeon and the honey badger. I mean, the emergency call handler doesn't care. So that's an overview of how we would create our own delegates and protocols. And so now that we're armed with this knowledge, we can be more dangerous. And in our project, we can start coding up the functionality for getting the weather data.